organizing information into a table is another way to answer different probability questions. So in this example, we have um, information on the education level and marital status of 665 randomly selected U.S. residents. What we have in each category, uh, first is our education level. We have people who identified as single with the totals being at the bottom. So we have 112 different people who identified as single broken up across these three categories. 408 people who identified as married, 84 people who identified as divorced, and so on. <clears throat> Reading the columns, we can see the people who had less high school, meaning they didn't graduate from high school, a total of 125 people, a total of 397 people who completed high school, and so on. So we have the individual values and the totals along the edges. And in each case, a total of 665 people who are included and represented in this table. So our first question is, what's the probability that a randomly selected person is married? So one thing that we're assuming with this table, the way this information was collected, is that a person had to identify as one of these categories, not multiple. So a person who is divorced but remarried would presumably identify themselves as married. A person who is divorced and not remarried would identify themselves as divorced. So we don't have any overlap between these categories. So the probability that a randomly selected person is married would be the 408 people who are married out of the 665 total people who were surveyed. So dividing that would give a 0 0.6135, rounded to about four decimal places. Or we could rewrite that as 61.35%. So both of these would be correct answers. Um, it would just depend on the homework system if it's looking for that as a decimal, if it's looking for that as a percent. For decimals, we typically round to about four decimal places. For percents, about two decimal places. In part B, what's the probability that a randomly selected person has a college education or higher? So if we randomly select someone out of this group, we're still selecting out of that group of 665. And if we look at the people who have a college education or higher, there are 143 people. So 143 divided by 665 gives us 0 0.2150, or about 21.5%. In part C, what's the prob probability that a randomly selected person is married and has a college education or higher? So now we want the probability that a person is married. So they have to be in this column. And we want them to have a college education or higher. So they need to be in this row. So we're still selecting one random person out of the 665 total. So we just look at where do those regions overlap. We have 98 people who are both married and have a college education or higher. So we get a probability of about 14.74%. In part D, what's the probability that a randomly selected person is married or has a college degree? So now we have a slightly different question. In part C, we wanted someone who is married and had completed college or higher. Now we want someone who's either married or has completed college or higher. So we can go back. We already have the probability of someone being married. That's the 408 over 665. And we have the, person, the probability that that person has completed college or higher. That's the 143 over 665. The problem, though, is that when we look at that group, we look at the people who are married. That gives us the 408. When we look at the people who have completed college or higher, 
we have this one group that we're double counting. So these 98 people right now are tied into this group and this group. So to avoid double counting them, what we'll do is subtract out that overlap so that now we're only counting that group of 98 people once to get a probability of 0 0.6812. So now in part E, we want to know the probability that a randomly selected person is married and divorced. So now we're looking at the column of people who are married and the column of people who are divorced. And what we see is those don't overlap again with the assumption that people had to identify as one or the other. So if there's no overlap, there's no way for a person to be both married and divorced, the probability of selecting someone like that is zero. It won't occur because there is nobody who falls into both of those categories. In part F, what's the probability that a randomly selected married person did not finish high school So this one changes the approach a little bit. So we're saying that what's the probability that a randomly selected married person did not finish high school? So since we're saying we're talking just about married people, we're starting off with the assumption that the person we've selected is married. So now instead of looking at this entire chart, all we're looking at are the people who are in this married column. So we know we have someone who's married and they did not finish high school. So in this case, we have 70 married people who didn't finish high school out of that total of 408. For a probability of 0 0.1716. And then in our last question, what's the probability that a randomly selected high school graduate is divorced? This is a similar type of question. We're s starting with the assumption that we selected a high school graduate. So we're narrowing that field. We're just looking at people who are high school graduates. And now we're looking for the probability that that person is divorced. So in our people who just completed high school, we have 59 people who are divorced out of that total of 397. So the probability that our high school graduate is divorced is going to be 59 out of 397 or 0 0.1486, so about 14.86%.